everyone and welcome back to my subscribers. If you're not already a subscriber, I'll put a link here for you. Today I have a reloading video for you and it's basically I'm going to inform you on a mistake that I made and hopefully you won't make it too because it's becoming very time consuming. What happened was my resizing the deep priming die had backed out just a little bit of the turret press that I use and so when I went to resize the, the, the spent brass it wasn't resizing it completely. In fact, it wasn't actually sizing the neck. That's the problem I'm running into. Now, right around the neck here, it was, it was putting a, a very nice radius instead of the sharp bend that it needs, so it wouldn't fully chamber into the rifle. And some of them, even if they would chamber, it would get jammed into the chamber so tight that you couldn't get it out without uh, forcibly banging it on the ground. I'll demonstrate that for you right here. Here's the magazine. I've got a couple of rounds in there. So we're going to take it. Notice the bolt is pretty much closed. You can see a gap right there. So that it's on an empty chamber right now. So let's go ahead and charge it. It actually closed, but well, that one was a good one. Let's try this one. Yeah, I can't uncharge it. Rather, I can't get it out of there. So the way the method you do for this is you retract the stock all the way down and you bang it on the ground to get it out of there. Now, before you freak out for I'm loading live ammo in the house, I removed the firing pin from the AR so that nothing would happen there. But that's a tough way to test the bullets on your gun anyway. This one may or may not be good. I'm, I'm probably going to pull it anyway because it doesn't look that great. I have a case gauge, and this is what really threw me off, was I dropped them in the case gauge and they seem real nice. They seem to work real good. Let me put a little more light on the subject here. So, I mean, it's, it's nice and flush but it needs to be flush with that bottom side right in here. Look at my firing pin. It needs to be flush right here, not on this high side. So let's take one that I haven't resized. See if you can see that in the camera. See how it's, it's raised up just a hair? That's all it takes apparently. That's another one I didn't resize. This one here I did resize. So after I pulled the bullet. So now it's it's nice and flush. It goes actually down below, just below the uh, the top here, just enough. So this is a real good piece of brass since I resized it. And all it took was to screw that resizing die all the way down, just a little bit further. So even if you think you've got your resizing die down far enough, eh, go another quarter turn to a half turn. There's a couple of different ways of pulling bullets. There's the inertia hammer and pulling crimped bullets, it's a pain in the rear. Plus you can see this one's been heavily used over time and I've already broke one. So I ended up having to go and buy a bullet puller which screws into the turret press or to any press for that matter that has the, the, the standard dies. And uh, then you have to go and buy the collet for your specific caliber. Now this collet's for the 270 and the 270 is the same as the 6.8 and it fits perfectly right here. So when I put that in there, into when I put the bullet into the collet to pull that it, it's not going to take up any of the brass it's only going to go over the bullet there's no space for the brass to go up in there so with the collet inside the die the bullet goes into the collet and then when you tight turn this it tightens up the collet pulling the collet up into the die which in turn clamps onto the bullet itself so then when you work the ram the bullet is clamped inside the collet and it pulls the brass away, leaving the bullet in the collet. Okay, so we've got our bullet puller in place and now we're ready to pull a bullet. So I'm gonna put it in the shell holder. I'm gonna take the ram and it's gonna come up until just about stops right there. Now the collet is caliber specific, if you remember. So it's not gonna go any further. It's not. It's no bigger than the, uh, the diameter of the bullet itself. So the brass is actually bigger. So it's gonna stop right there. So once you get it there, then I'm going to take the, the rod on top and I'm going to tighten that down. I'm going to grab a hold of the press. I have to get a little uh, leverage on the press since this is a turret press, it does turn. So I've tightened my, my rod here and now I'm going to back off the ram and it should leave the bullet in the collet. And so here's our empty case and our bullet is pulled. Here's one right here with virtually any no marks. So we should be in real good shape. You can see a little bit there where I crimped these before. That's why I'm having to use the, the manual bullet puller instead of the hammer.
Now you might be asking, once I pull this bullet, what am I going to do with the brass case? How am I going to fix that neck problem? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the powder and I'm going to pour it into another brass that I've already re or fixed, resized, if you will. But before I even do that, I'm going to remove the primer, the depriming pin from the resizing die. And that's the resizing die right here. For the RCBS dies that I'm using, it just unscrews and there you go. So what that does is it'll allow me to resize the die without throwing out or you know knocking out the brand new primer that's in there, the good primer. So then once I get it resized, then I just put the powder in from another one and keep going. And then once I'm done there, then I'll turn my turret over to the bullet seater and I'll reseat those bullets right there and into a great big pile of a lot of wasted time. All right, so there we have it. I've pulled and reseated all of these rounds, a lot of wasted time in a, for not checking that die. So <laughs> check your dies, make sure you got them all the way down there. The, the bullet puller here that I used is a whole lot nicer than the hammer, especially if you're trying to be quiet. You know, I work late at night while everybody's sleeping. And so this thing here bangs on the wall or on the ground rather and just kind of echoes throughout the house. Plus it's pretty messy once the bullet falls out from the inertia the powder sprays, it's, it doesn't seal up properly, or completely rather, so I, get, I lose a little bit of powder. So using this bullet puller here allowed me to use my powder charge that was already in there because that was good to go. You know, measuring the powder can be pretty time consuming, but doing this, reworking ammo, that is really time consuming. So please learn from my mistake. All right, well, thanks for watching, and please subscribe for more competition shooting and gun reviews. Thanks.